name and where you're calling in from. Ricky, calling from Georgia. How you doing, Ricky? I'm doing good, man. How you good, doing? Good, good. What's going on tonight? Um, uh, my question is, uh, I know people do deliverance and stuff, but have you ever heard of like when you get to somebody doing deliverance over the phone or in person that they talk in tongues the whole entire time? That they like speaking demonic tongue or like a Holy Spirit tongue? I I, I don't know, man. That's why I was calling you because. I just didn't, it didn't really feel right. Yeah. I, I wasn't for sure. Like, like they be talking normal when they go to pray for me. It's so all of a sudden they start talking in tongues the whole entire time when they're trying to, I guess. Oh, when they're doing deliverance know. on you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, got you. Okay. I got what you're saying. Sorry. I thought you meant when you were doing deliverance on someone, they spoke in tongues the whole time. No, no. When, when they do it on me, like, like I met this guy. At this church thing, and I called him and told him some things I was going through, and, and then he was he started talking in tongues the whole entire time. I didn't know if that was normal or not. So he didn't ever do any English deliverance. It was only tongues. No, it was all tongues, and and I, I didn't really. I mean, I threw up a couple of times, but I still didn't feel right, you know. Yeah. Okay. So the thing about why I tell people that you shouldn't do that is number one, demons don't understand tongues, okay? So when we're doing deliverance, we're commanding the demons to leave. So we're giving them a command, like Jesus said, come out of the man, or he would say deaf and dumb spirit, come out of the man. So when we're commanding demons out in Jesus' name, we're not like telling God, hey God, you know, when we command a demon out, we're not asking God like, hey God, get this demon out. We're telling the demon to come out with our authority in Christ. So speaking in tongues, the demon doesn't understand tongues. So, and also the Bible yeah. says tongues, there's two types. There's one that's in it where there's an interpretation that edifies the body. And there's two that's in a, a building up. It's a personal intercession tongue where you pray in tongues for yourself. And it's a building up of yourself. So if you're praying in tongues and there's no interpretation, there's no point because there's no benefit of that. If you're speaking in a tongue with an interpretation, if you're speaking in a personal tongue, where you're just praying between you and God, well, that's also good, but that's personal edification. That's not going to edify you, and that's not going to edify anybody because it's no interpretation. It's just self-edification. So those are the two types of tongues, and the gift of tongues is literally, the gift is called kinds of tongues. So there's not one type. There's multiple types of speaking in tongues, okay? So those two ways that you can use speaking in tongues, neither of those have to do with deliverance. So I would not recommend doing that. The only way, reason why... And everyone pay very close attention to what I'm going to say, okay? Because I don't want people going like, wait, what? The only reason why I would speak in tongues during deliverance is for my own personal edification and revelation. So in other words, say I'm praying for you, right, in English, and there's a demon not willing to leave. Like, it just won't leave. I've tried everything. I've prayed. We've done everything we try to do. And the demon just won't leave. Maybe I'll spend two minutes or a minute praying in tongues, like kind of under my breath to try to get a revelation from God for myself to help the deliverance. So I might just pray in tongues for a minute to try to get a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, but I'm not doing it to pray for you and I'm not doing it to interpret. I'm just trying to get my own building up to get a revelation from God or a word of knowledge and get that access with God going so that I could see why the deliverance is stalled out, right? That was the, that was the only reason why I would speak in tongues, but no, to try to do a two hour or hour or 10 minute, 20 minute deliverance where I'm just speaking in tongues, uh, nothing's happening there because again, the demons can't understand tongues and I can't command a demon out in tongues. It edifies me or there's an interpretation and there's neither happening. So it's just not useful. Now it's never bad to speak in tongues, right? It's not like, oh, we should forbid speaking in tongues. The Bible says, do not forbid speaking in tongues. But when it comes to deliverance, there's nowhere in the Bible where anybody spoke in tongues during deliverance to get a demon out. So again, I, I want to make sure that I'm not cutting it off to say you shouldn't speak in tongues during deliverance because I think the only good place for it is if you need a revelation and you need God to build you up and you're the deliverance minister, speak in tongues. Now, if you're the one receiving deliverance, I still wouldn't speak in tongues. And here's why. If you're trying to get a demon out of a person, there's only one way out, right? And the Holy Spirit speaking out of you because that's what tongues is, the Holy Spirit praying through you and the demon's trying to come out. Like, how's the demon come, gonna come out while the Holy Spirit's speaking out of you? So that's why I tell people, when I'm praying for you, just let me pray for you. Don't speak in tongues. Don't try to say, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just let me command the demon out. Let me do the deliverance. Um, so that's something to think about. I know people get mad, say, why would you tell me not to speak in tongues during the deliverance? Well, it's because I'm trying to get the demon out of you. And likely the demon's not gonna come out of you while the Holy Spirit's speaking out of you. It's like you only have one spot for the demon to come out. So does that answer your question? Does that clear things up a little bit for you? Yeah, it does. And I was going to say, ever since that happened, it's like I've been dealing with like anxiety, confusion, 
and all kind of stuff. That's why I say I didn't feel like it was right, you know, because I went to his church like or wherever it was one time, and I didn't go back after, you know. He actually laid hands on me and stuff. And okay, so are you thinking little, that there there could have been some type of demonic tongues going on or something? Yeah, or some kind of. I hope he didn't like you know say something over me or anything. I was gonna see if I get you to pray for me as well. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, it sounds like, you know, he has a church. He's trying to go after God. He's doing the best he can. I don't think he had any ill intention. I have still never met somebody that's like trying to cast out demons and doing it for like demonic gain or anything. Like the devil doesn't cast out the devil. So no one in the occult is going to sit there and try to cast out demons in Jesus name. No one in the occult is going to have a church where they're, you know, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, demonic tongues, you have to be intentional. You don't like accidentally speak in demonic tongues. It's actually something you intentionally do. So I don't think he probably, I don't think you'd need to worry about like him speaking anything over you or tongues. Now, of course, people can speak things over us that are not biblical or not right. But for me, it's like, hey, I don't receive that. You know, you don't have authority and power over me, but I wouldn't stress out about like, hey, man, he's speaking. I think a lot of Christians have this weird, like they're paranoid, like, oh, everyone is trying to like put spirits on me or like people are speaking in demonic tongues over me. If the guy has a church that he has, you know, and he's part of a church, he's praising Jesus, he's doing it in Jesus name there's a 99.9% .9 chance he's not trying to cast a demon on you or do he probably just isn't trained or equipped and he was just doing his best to try to help you but I don't think he was now what probably happened is this bro and I'm gonna be honest with you the reason why you're probably feeling like anxiety and manifestations is he probably got those demons riled up in you right he probably stirred up some demons he probably got them mad just the fact that you're trying to get delivered is gonna make demons mad so that's probably yeah. what happened those demons that were hiding for years they're probably all stirred up right now because we're talking about them right now you know you've gotten prayer now even though maybe he didn't do it the right way those demons still know like hey this guy's trying to get us get us kicked out so they're gonna get real yeah. stirred up and mad but I really would I really don't think the guy did demonic tongues or spoke curses over you or nothing like that. Um, that's a very, very rare situation to happen. Most people that are in the occult are not trying to like be Christians and undercover. I mean, it's very rare that it's, there's undercover stuff going on. Um, so I wouldn't stress out about that, but I will pray for you for sure. Is there anything specific that you needed prayer for? Uh, just the anxiety and I guess fear and uh, confusion. Like, cause like, you know, I try to read my Bible and stuff and it's like sometimes I get up and I don't like want to pray or anything yeah. or read the Bible. And, and, you know, I don't like feeling like that. I want to be on fire for God. You know, I want to do the right thing. I want to be obedient. You know, I want to do his will. And it's like some mornings I get up, I don't, I don't even feel nothing, you know, and I feel like God's distance, but I know he's not, but I just feel that way. Yeah. And now I just do don't you, like feeling have that you, way. Have you checked out anybody else on the deliverance map to try to connect with yet? Uh, I haven't. Yeah, so check out our website. We have basically an interactive map where you can connect with people that do deliverance. They've like applied through our system and we've put them on our map. So you can link up and say, hey, I just need some deliverance prayer and they're on our map. So you can email them, call them. Definitely try that and I'll pray for you as well. And then two, this is a big one. Deliverance is awesome and it's biblical. Jesus did it everywhere he went, it's, it's good. But also we have to make sure we're living that disciplined life. Cause there's times where, not that you're not, I'm just saying like giving you some advice yeah. here. There's times where like, we don't spend the time in prayer or the word and we're like, God, I don't really feel you, but we're not really making like a real good effort. And it's not works based, but it's like, man, I want to make an effort to chase God, to pursue God. So if I'm like spending, let's say like two to three to four hours a day on, let's say like movies, TikTok, social media and hobbies, whatever it is. And then I'm giving God like five or 10 minutes. It's like, man, am I, and I'm just saying to myself, am I really making an effort to really pursue and chase God? So that's why we have to also look at like, okay, what is my discipline like? Let me give God, let me go like 30 minutes to an hour a day, the word and prayer. And let me see what happens here. Cause if we draw near to God, the Bible says God will draw near to us. So some things are, are deliverance for sure. Some things are demonic for sure. So I don't doubt that. But then also there's an element of discipline where we have to like, okay, God, even if I don't fail you, I'm going to pursue you. Even if I don't experience you, I'm going to push through. And it's a battle. I mean, we're on a narrow road. It's a difficult road, but God definitely wants to encounter you. It's just, sometimes there's that breaking through. It's like, seek him and you'll find him. We don't know how long though, right? Knock and the door will be open. We don't know how many times we need to knock. So I want to just challenge you with that but i'm also going to pray for you as well okay and see another thing uh i mean uh i guess i shouldn't be like fear of going to churches and stuff but i went to this one church and went down to the altar and i felt like god was saying step out of the boat so i told the dude down there and i said i feel like god saying step out of the boat he said we'll do it then so i went to take one step forward and i couldn't really tell them but when i did you know I, uh i started crying i fell out on the floor 
And some girl, I guess I don't know who she was, come up and grabbed my hand, like kissed me on the forehead. And then that dude that was praying for me, he come held me down and said they was casting a demon out or something. I don't know, man. It's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know, man. I, she kissed you on the I forehead? I don't know if she's like, yeah, I don't know if she like put something on me or something, but I was started she really hollering old? and stuff. Yeah, she was young. Oh, that's weird, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get down with that. You know, I don't recommend anyone kissing I, yeah. people on the forehead at the altar. But see, yeah, but see, I was I was out though. You know, I had my eyes closed and and I I freaked out. You know, and I ain't go back to that church because they they held me down. And I started hollering and stuff. Was it? Were you manifesting a demon? Do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, but see, so, I had never experienced that. Yeah, yeah. So you were just overwhelmed. And, and, yeah, and he told me. Uh, that they got something out of me i guess the demon i don't know man but it freaked me out because i ain't never had that happen yeah i mean hey that's a good thing though that's what you want man it's like i know it sounds it sounds kind of scary or bad for new people but hey i would rather have that happen uh, apart from the girl kissing the forehead that's just weird but yeah, i would rather yeah, have somebody one. casting a demon out of me than go to these lukewarm churches where they put demons in yeah. you you know it's just so yeah i mean it is it is gonna be it is gonna be rough at first and, when you get started but yeah. they're at least trying and see i don't know if that girl was possessed because they said they set her free after i called them and told them i said i didn't like what happened they said well it's okay you know we we, we cast we set her free and all that and i'm like still i said she didn't put nothing on me this you know because i don't i don't get down like that and yeah you know like i said i had my eyes closed and because i know the old boy corner held me down and said saying talking uh some stuff praying and stuff and he kept saying, say the name of Jesus, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, she might have, well, I guess if she was demonized, then she was probably manifesting too. So that might have been why she kissed yeah. you on the forehead. So, okay, that makes I sense. Know, I thought she was like on the prayer team or something. I'm like, uh, I don't no, know about that. No, okay, okay. She's no, just a random because, girl. Yeah, because when, whenever I came to, you know, I never saw the girl, but when I came to and I went to leave, I, uh, I, I made on contact with the girl and I said, you better get her away from me right now. <laughs> it, yeah. it was like I knew who she was. Yeah, well, yeah, the spirits that were getting cast out of you or, or could yeah. still be there were recognizing. So, yeah, she, yeah. she was definitely needing freedom, too. And we got to give yeah. people <clears throat> grace, right? Because everybody does it different. Um, I like to, when I do deliverance, I usually, like, I want the person to acknowledge it. I want to talk about what's going on with them. But, yeah, some places just are forceful about it. You know, not something I highly recommend, but... A, like sometimes people need that to get the, to get freedom. Yeah. And some of those emotions you might be feeling are could be coming from a demon. Like if you're angry about somebody yeah. ca trying to cast a demon out of you, like, and I'm being straight with you, it's likely that it's a demon mad in you. And you're like, I'm mad about it. But then it's like, wait, why am I mad that they're trying to pray for me? But it's, oh, it's a demon yeah. that's mad in me. Um, so that could be going on too. But let me pray for you, okay? Okay, yes, sir. Father, I thank you so much for my brother. Lord, I thank you what you're doing in his life. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would liberate him tonight, God, that you would completely free him from all confusion, from all anxiety, from all stress right now, Lord, all this stuff that he's going through in his mind. I pray, Lord, that you would bring wisdom, revelation, and clarity. I just pray, Lord, right now that you'd remove this anxiety from him. You'd remove this confusion. And Lord, if there's any unbelief in us, Help our unbelief, Lord, as the man prayed. Take our unbelief from us. If my brother is dealing with unbelief, I pray, Lord, that you would remove that unbelief and that you would fill us with a spirit of faith. You'd fill us with a spirit of might. That, Lord, you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit. Right now, Father, I just pray that you would baptize my brother in the Holy Spirit from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, pour your Holy Spirit out on him right now, Lord. I just pray rivers of living water to flow. You said, Jesus, if we ask, you'd give us the Holy Spirit to those that ask. So tonight we ask you, for the Holy Spirit. And we just pray right now, baptize my brother in the Holy Spirit and fire. Just have your way, Lord. Do what only you can do. Touch him right now. Deliver him right now. Put him on the straight and narrow path. Put him, put the right people around him tonight, Jesus. In your precious, precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, bro, hey, keep going at it. Keep going after God. Check out the map as well. And uh, you're on the right track, man. Keep going for it. Yes, sir. All right. God bless you. Thanks for calling. God bless you. Yes, Take sir. Care. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, let's take our next caller here. Really good question, guys. I know we went long, but it is what it is. Some of these are going to go long. Some of these are going to go short. I don't. I don't want to rush people. I want to. I would rather take five to ten calls of being like quality than twenty-five calls of being like okay, bye, and just going to the next person. So, it is what it is. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Um. Yes. Um. My name is Ray Vaughn. I'm from Longburn, North Carolina. What's up, bro? Um, How you doing? 
What's up? What's up? How you doing? Good, man. What's going on tonight? Oh, man. Oh, I just want to ask two questions and uh, I'd like for you to pray for me. And yeah, what's home. up? Um, When, I mean, I know God probably manifests himself to you before. Um, When he manifested himself to you, you know, what was that like? Like, I you know, um, go ahead, go ahead. Are you talking about my initial encounter that I had at the altar? Not, um, I, did you have like more than one with him besides the altar? Cause I, I know you explained what that was like. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about just like in general, like what have my encounters with God? What, what are they, what have they been like? Like, yeah. Like you was in prayer or you were studying the word and he like, he manifests himself in, um, you know, in the room with you. And you know, what was that like? Um, so cause I had a, um, similar experience this past week and i just want to know what was it like for you yeah so for me i mean god has manifested himself i would say a, a lot of times in the sense that not where it's like oh god's in the room or god walked why well, for, for sure god's in the room but like not like god walked in but like when i mm -hmm. talk about manifestation of god it would be like hearing his voice is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So like if it's a still small voice, if it's an outward voice, however God could speak mm -hmm. to you, then there's many ways he can do that. Or for me, like an overwhelming sense of joy, overwhelming sense of peace. Mm -hmm. And when I say peace, I'm talking about like, if you're going through a struggle or a hard time or a family member died and all of a sudden like you're full of anxiety and stress and worry and whatever contention. And then you go into your prayer closet and you start praying and you have all this stress, anxiety, then all of a sudden you feel like from the top of your head down, just an overwhelming sense of peace rush over you or like almost like stuffing li lifting off of you to me that's like a manifestation of the holy spirit right we know the holy spirit lives in us so it's not necessarily that god right. has to be like in the room next to us which god can do but it's like the manifestation of the holy spirit and there's i mean there's so many different ways the holy spirit could manifest i've had you know one time where i heard the audible voice of god when i was at the altar and i heard it a second time where i woke up in the morning and I had this dream. Well, the dream was of Jesus. I saw Jesus as a bright light. I couldn't see his face. It was an unapproachable light. And I woke up and it was the a most incredible dream I've ever had. And I heard an audible voice. And again, not a still small voice, not an inward the way the Holy Spirit usually speaks. I heard an audible voice mm -hmm. saying, Jesus is my son. Like audible from heaven voice. And that was obviously incredible. Yeah. I, I didn't ask for it. I didn't pray. I just had a dream of Jesus, woke up and I heard a voice from, I guess, the heavens, I don't know, I just audibly say, Jesus is my son. And those are the only two times I heard the audible voice of God. Like when I say audible, I mean not in my spirit, outside God speaking down to me. The other times that I've heard God, the other thousands of times that I hear God throughout the week or throughout the day is a still small voice, right? It's like that second voice mm -hmm. telling you something or, hey, son, I'm proud of you or, hey, do this or, hey, go there or, hey, give this person this money. That's one way God speaks to me all the right. time. Like, hey, bless this person. Then you do it. And they say, I was literally just praying like I couldn't pay rent or my water bills due. Like, you don't even know that's exactly. And it was God. The Holy Spirit right. uses <laughs> people. So for me, that's how I usually hear God is that still small inward Holy Spirit speaking. As far as like God walking in the room, I would say there's several times in services where it's like the presence of God is so strong, you just know he's in the room or you feel the moment the Holy Spirit rushed in the room and everyone's on their face crying, right? I've had probably four or five of those in 11 years and you know over a thousand services. So it's not super, super common where you feel that awe and reverence where it's like, the, like God is just stepped in and that holiness and power. But I can tell mm -hmm. you, I have had times in prayer just being, you know, I guess giving you guys some of my intimate times where it's like, I'll be in prayer and like the presence of God is so strong, God just like get on your face. And it's not, uh, let me rephrase it. It's not even that God is like, get on your face. It's this overwhelming you thing should. in me saying like, yeah. I got to get on my face yeah. right now because I'm in the presence right. of somebody so holy, so powerful uh -huh. that I got to get on my face. So that will happen in prayer or like I'll feel the overwhelming. I need to get on my knees right now. Like I'm in the presence of a holy yeah. king. So that's another manifestation oh, yeah. <laughs> that happens in prayer. But again, God is so powerful and so good that he shows himself different to everybody right he speaks one thing religion does is it says this is the only way god manifests so for example if i share these testimonies tonight or you share yours a religious teacher or preacher would say oh no god can't do that that's not in the bible that's not how god manifests like he doesn't show himself to people like that anymore but who's to say 
Why? Why can't he? Right? Like, so we don't ever want to tell someone mm -hmm. that's not God. Like we want to make sure that hey, God can do whatever he wants. If it doesn't violate scripture, God can do whatever he wants. So yeah, those are some things, right. I guess, a couple ways that I've encountered God or, or, you know, you just, you just know, you know that God is speaking to you or God is moving. Um, so yeah, I hope that maybe right. kind of answers some of your question. Um, yeah, cause that last statement you made about, um, you had that, that urge to get on your, your face. Um, I had that experience two times, um, last year and this past week, um, I got on my knees. I felt like getting on my knees and my, and my hands and I just started trembling all of a sudden. And it's like this overwhelming, uh, terror came over me and I, I was crying and I just started praying and I believe God was like, this is me. Wow. And he was telling me, don't be, don't be afraid. And um, I was just crying, and then he he told me, he said, "Rise up, my son." And um, man, uh, cause he he's he's giving me something. I, I wanted to tell you, but I feel like he don't want me to say anything right now. So um, yeah, they don't say that. He want, doesn't want you to. Don't yeah, say yeah, it. Yet. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's why that's why I want to ask you. And uh, um, the second one is, have have God been dealing with you? Like you just been giving this this sense of there's something around the corner. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it's like there's something around the corner, there's something coming. And um, I don't know. I just don't know how to explain that one. Yeah, I man, just, I've I been feeling that since... Have you been feeling it? Yeah, I've been feeling that since January. You know, when I was going to pray, Lord, give me a word for the year. I didn't feel him give me a word, but I felt something. I just kept saying something eerie is going to happen. I hate even saying that. I don't say it a lot because I don't want people like freaking out. Oh no, you know, stock up on food. That's not what I'm saying. But I do right. feel like we're on the verge of something, I would say catastrophic, but I think also an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like a move of God, like we've never seen before. And I think God is getting right. ready to do what, what he's always wanted to do, save people, heal people, deliver people. But yeah, I, I feel that and the nations are at, un, at unrest right now and there's something happening and we're on the verge of something big. I hope it's not another pandemic. I hope it's not another world catastrophe. I hope it's not a, a, ju a judgment of God on the earth. It could be, I don't know. Could right. be God about to judge right. the earth, who knows? But I do think we're on the verge of something big. And I just, I'm like, okay, if I feel that, I'm gonna speak that that's a revival, that's awakening. I don't know exactly what it is, but I said that in January, like, hey, I just have an eerie feeling about this year, like we're on the verge of something. I don't know if it's a world war, I, I, I don't know. But I do feel that something's happening right now and and in the midst of whatever the enemy's doing, whatever's happening in the world, in these end time events unfolding, these last days events, also God is pouring out a spirit on all flesh. So that's my focus. Like, hey, I want to be on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I want to train people like while we're able to go live. Like imagine this, we're able to go live right now, talk about God. In five years, we may not be able to do this. Like, I don't know how long I have right. to be able to put out videos every day and train people and teach people and how long my channel will be there. Like, right? I could get all my videos deleted tomorrow and all my pages. So I just want right. to keep seizing the day, taking the opportunity to win the loss, preach the gospel, train up the church. But yeah, I feel the same way, man. We're definitely on the verge of something. All right. Well, Thanks for calling in, bro. Oh, you, yeah. Um, can you um pray for me? Um, ever since you know God released something on me, I've just been dealing with just um thoughts, you know, just evil thoughts, you know. Um, I've been trying to read the Bible, evil thoughts become my mind, stuff like that, and um, I just need prayer for my mind because I'm being attacked right now in my mind, and that's yeah. what the devil been trying to have me at. Yeah, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for my brother. I just pray, Lord, that you would destroy every stronghold in his mind. I pray, Lord, right now, every assignment, every strategy, every attack from Satan's kingdom, we just pray, God, that you would cancel it in Jesus' name, that every stronghold would shatter in Jesus' mighty name, that you would just send your wave of revival over my brother, your wind of the Spirit, God. And I just pray, God, that you would give him just fortification in his mind. I pray you'd give him strength in his mind. I pray you'd give him peace that surpasses all understanding, that you'd give him a mind, the mind of Christ, that you said you give peace whose mind is set on you. So tonight, God, we set our mind on you and we just pray, Lord, that you'd give us peace of mind, that you would free us from every stronghold, every unclean spirit, every unclean power, and that, God, you would just deliver us in the mind, God, that you would deliver us, Father, right now. Have your way and do what only you can do. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Satan, we come against you, you're bound. We shatter the strongholds in Jesus Christ's name, and we just pray freedom and deliverance right now over my brother. We thank you, Lord. Have your way, God. Renew his mind in Jesus' name.
Amen. Thank you, man. Thank awesome, you. bro. Appreciate Keep going that. for it, bro. Stay on fire, all right? I, I'm encouraged to hear that you're still on fire. Keep going for it. All right, thank you. All right, God bless, bro. Take care. God bless. All right, we're going to take our next caller here. Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Hi, my name is Maria. I'm calling from Orlando. Did you say Maria? Yes, it is. Hi, Maria. How are you? I'm doing great, Isaiah. Mine is not so much a question. It's more I want to say thank you because ever since I started watching, listening to you, I felt like I got some deliverance through your videos. And I continue to pray and fast. But sometimes I feel like I need more guidance or I... I mean, oh, my God, like, what else do I have to do not to feel, like, confused on a every other day basis or no matter as much as I pray and I fast, I always feel like there's something holding me back. And listening to all your videos and all, sometimes I feel like there's something to do with generational curse because I'm following God's way. I follow every of your teaching and not all my family is following that as well so sometimes that kind of confuses me yeah so you're feeling what do you do you feel like a confusion that you can't like there's no reason for it like a cloudiness like what type of confusion is it like that you're experiencing well i i feel like like to share something with you i stop watching and tv shows i i'm always just listening to you pastor vlad or just reading and getting more into the word and then sometimes i don't know where i'm doing great and then i'll just get anger i'll start thinking about like stuff in my past and it's just i feel like it's something deeper within that i don't know how to control have you gone through deliverance before no just through you and pastor vlad listening to you guys and i definitely seen changes and felt things that I never felt that I know how to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I feel anointed. And then two or three days go or an experience of regular daily life stuff. And I feel like I just said that. Now, do you feel like you need a deliverance? Do you feel like there's demonic spirits there that are causing this confusion and pulling you back and everything? But sometimes I do. Do you ever manifest during any of the videos or do you ever get angry? Do you ever like, is there ever like a demonic manifestation at church or anything? No, more like with you once I, I, I started like coughing, I started crying and then I felt good for, I mean, months and I continue to change like things that I would normally do. And then I don't know where any family disagreement or anything, I, I feel like, oh, this is not real. Not saying it in that sense, but like, oh, I continue to fast, I pray. Why do I continue to feel like I'm being set back rather than continue to walk with Christ and, and just, you know, not have no thoughts of feeling like, oh, this is normal. It's okay. It's going to happen. God will still be there when I know I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Now, how's your prayer life and your reading been like on a weekly basis? How's that been going? Oh, really good. There's not a day I don't wake up and first thing I pray. And while I'm driving to work an hour drive, I'm listening to you or Pastor Vlad or I'll continue to just pray the, the way through work. I get home. I study online and school, of course, but I'll take my time to make sure I do prayers. I talk to people at I'm a general manager, and you know how corporations are. And sometimes I was getting some people, you know, like, God bless you of this. And now I'm more open to it, just hearing how you would be in Starbucks. I mean, at, at your old job, yes. And Starbucks, you would be all on fire for God, and I feel that. And ever since I pushed towards that, I have patients come up to me because I'm in the medical field tell me, oh, you got an anointing or Someone will come in just to get an adjustment and they're like, oh, and God told me to tell you this. And sometimes I'm like, wow, this is insane. He talks to you through people and then something happens. And I'm like, was that really God sending me a message? And I hate the fact that I got to question that because you clearly say that 
the devil's not going to send someone to help you or do a great deed. So I feel like, I don't know if it's more like I need deliverance and mm-hmm. or a real, I mean, I was trying to, and because I'm in Orlando and I know that, and Pastor Daniels was near by me, like literally 30 minutes, but then he moved his ministry and I was like, oh no, why? So I hear you're coming Orlando and I was looking forward to that time. But honestly, I just feel like I need deliverance because the closer I'm getting to God, the harder I think that I'm being tested. Yeah. Now, I would definitely say the reason why I asked that is because you're and this is a perfect point to make to people watching. You're praying, you're reading, you're seeking God, but you still have these thoughts and this thing, this confusion, this thing in you wanting to draw you, drag you away. So that's why I'm saying if you're already crucifying your flesh. So it's not your flesh because you're, you're praying, you're reading, you're doing, you're listening to all this Christian content every day. It's, it's a demonic spirit there that's trying to drag you away, that's trying to get you confused, that's manifesting itself. So I would definitely say get deliverance. Now, we have a ton of people on our map that are in Florida. So I would definitely look at the map, look in your area, try to see if you can link up with somebody, meet up with somebody, maybe, or you're more comfortable finding one of our churches in Florida that do deliverance, going to one of those churches that do deliverance that are on our map, that you definitely need to go through a deliverance first and then say, okay, if it wasn't a demon, it's something else. But I would say first, try that because that could be the reason. Now, if you have a demon, then you need to get delivered, right? You don't you don't just fast it out. You don't pray. You don't just uh, read it out. You don't just, the Bible doesn't say just pray more. The Bible doesn't say read more. The Bible doesn't say fast more. It was deliverance. That was the key to getting demons out. So a lot of times we try other things to get demons out, but it's like, hey, if it's a demon, then we do, we cast it out. Like that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't go up to the lady in Luke 13 who had a demon for 18 years of infirmity and say, hey, you just need to read the Torah more, or hey, you just need to fast more, or hey, you just need to pray more. He cast the demon out of her. Like that was the thing she needed. So I would say probably for you, what it sounds like is you need to go through a deliverance. And I would try to link up with somebody on the map, link up with the church if you're not comfortable connecting with somebody on the map, because we do have churches on our map that are in Florida. Or all, and also, you know, come see us in July. I would love to meet you. I'd love to pray with you in July. The problem with that is there's so many people. Sometimes it's hard to get through the crowd. Sometimes it's hard to get to meet with somebody. So I would try those other ways first. And then, you know, again, I'll be there in July and come to that meeting. We'll be, do, of course, we're going to be doing deliverance there. We'll have teams. Even if it's not me praying for you, it doesn't matter. There'll be other people praying deliverance. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be my recommendation to you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. So yeah, that would be my recommendation to you. Do those things first and then go from there, but definitely first get a deliverance. Okay. So check out the map. It's my website, isaiasaldivar.com slash deliverance and see if you can find someone or a church in your area and start there and then come in July as well. We'll be out there in Orlando. We'll be praying deliverance. We'll have deliverance teams there and I would love to meet you after service as well. Can you hear me? Uh, now I could. I was about to say that that was a lie, but I'm hearing you now. Okay, yeah, so definitely do those things, and I would love to meet you in July, sister, okay? All right, can you say a prayer for me and also a blessing on my new home I just bought? Absolutely. Father, I thank you so much for my sister Maria, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in her life. I just pray, Lord, that not only would you bless her home, but you would fill it with your Holy Spirit. We just pray the angels of God, Lord, fill that house with angels and your Holy Spirit and revival. Let that house, that new home, be a revival home. I pray for my sister, Lord, that you would just bring the right people around her. I just pray, Lord, that you would deliver her, that you would set her free from every demonic spirit, every unclean power. Lord, connect her with the people that can help her get free, that, Lord, we know according to your word that this is the children's bread that we are eligible for deliverance that this is the children's bread so father we pray in jesus name deliverance breakthrough revival father i pray you'd use her as that general manager in, in the health field use your god to bring revival deliverance healing and just reformation at her job at her work i thank you god for what you're doing in her life fill her with your holy spirit and power do what only you can do in her life tonight lord we thank you for what you're doing in her life and in jesus name we pray amen amen 
Awesome. Somebody just said, hey, I think they're in Orlando, Global Vision Bible Church. They do deliverance every Sunday night. So they're probably on my deliverance map, but go check out that site and, and get connected with somebody, okay? I will. God bless you. God bless you, sister. I'll meet you in July, all right? All right. We'll all right. Take care. Right You're welcome. God bless. Bye. Awesome. As you guys see there, you know, she says, I'm praying, I'm reading. Like a lot of guys say, oh, just pray and read more says, okay, but I'm already doing all those things every day. I'm, I, I know God, but there's something in me that's enticing me and confusing me. That's where deliverance takes place. Now, I'm very healthy when it comes to, I teach discipline and deliverance. So anyone that says, oh, Isaiah thinks everything's a demon, he only teaches deliverance, that's wrong. I teach discipline, the crucified life. How many times do you guys hear me say, do you pray and read your Bible, right? There's discipline, not just always deliverance, but when someone's disciplined and they're still having these symptoms, then oftentimes it is a demonic spirit. And if you haven't been delivered, you probably need deliverance. Like, I know people hate that, but I'm gonna keep saying that, it doesn't matter. If you haven't been delivered and you had a crazy past, you probably need to get delivered. I've been delivered, my wife's been delivered, pretty much everybody I know in ministry has been delivered. Like, go through a deliverance. I don't know, you think you're exempt because, like, why? Why do you think that you don't need deliverance? So. I would say everybody should go through a deliverance. Everybody should get prayer to get demons cast out of them. Because if you open doors, it's likely a demon came in in your past. Amen. All right, don't make me start preaching here. Let's take the next caller here. All right, we're bringing in Grace on Zoom here. Moving along. Grace, go ahead and turn your microphone on. It says, oh, it says you're connecting to audio. Oh, it says you have no microphone. Grace, if you can, turn your microphone on. Let's see if we can get you. How you doing? Uh, hello. Oh, sorry, that took a while. I'm okay. good, thanks. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm from, um from New Zealand. Awesome. Well, welcome to the call. Thanks for calling all the way from New Zealand. What's going on? Um, yeah. So basically, I'm having a bit of trouble when I'm around my family and friends who are unsaved because just say we like we're going to watch a movie or something, right, to hang out. It would be a, like a movie of witchcraft or murder. And I don't want to do that because my body is not mine. It's God's and um, like the Holy Spirit lives in me, obviously. So I don't want to be doing that. But what do I do in that situation? Because, I mean, like it's family time, right? So do I leave or do I watch it? Or like, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like an awkward situation for me. Yeah, I mean, totally. It's it's hard. It's not going to be easy, especially with family. But I mean, you have to just make the choice to draw the line in the sand and just say, hey, these are my convictions. And you might call me crazy. You might laugh at me. You might feel like, hey, I'm being rejected. But I'd rather be obedient to God than be accepted by even family. So I think drawing that line in the sand and being like, I just don't watch these. Hey, I'll watch a movie with you guys. Like, But I'm anything with witchcraft, magic, I'm not comfortable watching because I know what that does i know that's an open door spiritually and i don't want fear in i don't want anxiety i don't want these things to come in and so you know with all due respect let's maybe recommend a different movie how about we watch this movie that doesn't have all those things and there's plenty mm -hmm. of movies out there that aren't witchcraft magic spells horror um so i would definitely do that but at the end of the day i mean it's not easy to stand up for god it's not easy to say hey this is what i'm going to do it sounds easy right when we talk about it on a call on live stream where we're all christians everyone's like yeah just stand up for it but i get it when you're in the moment and you have friends and family there that you want to spend time with and you want to have family time but i would say just drawing the line and like i have family that they won't even invite me over because they know like hey he's not he won't go see this movie or they won't even ask me in the first four times they asked me, I said, hey, you know, I don't watch those type of movies. If it's a different type, I'd love to. Or, hey, it's just not something that we do. And then after a while, they're like, we're not going to ask you anymore. And for, especially if you're young, it feels bad to not be included, right? Like they don't, my friends don't even invite me anymore. But it's like, man, yeah. I'm on a different road than them. And that's the whole idea of when you get saved, do you just tell all your old friends you don't hang out with them anymore? And the answer is they aren't going to want to hang out with you because you're going this way. They're going that way. And so what do we have in common? That's why the Bible says like, we don't partner with unbelievers. Like what does fellowship, does light and darkness have together? What fellowship does unbelievers and believers have together? Paul is asking like, what do you even have in common with them? And the answer is nothing. So that's why like with even friends, sometimes it's like, man, I just need to find new friends because every time 
we hang out, they want to do something against my convictions. And I don't want yeah. anything. Convictions are some of the strongest things you'll ever have. And the Bible says if you violate your convictions, even if it's not sin, it is sin. So like if I have a conviction for something, whether it's eating meat, right? Say to me, it's like eating meat is a sin. That's my conviction. Even though that's not true, let's just say that's my conviction. And I go against that. The Bible says I'm sinning if I believe it's a sin. So that's why you have to be very careful that you don't let people violate your conscience, violate your convictions, or do something against what like you feel the Holy Spirit convicting you to do. Whether that's a movie, a video game, uh, whatever it could be, um, not all sin is the same for every person. Some people have no conviction. Some others, God said, don't do that. And they have a conviction against it. So yeah, I would definitely say just keep drawing okay. the line and letting them know like, hey, here's an alternative if you guys want to watch this. If not, I'll, I'll talk to you guys after or, or whatever it could be. Okay. Thank you. I hope that helps you out, Grace. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for calling. God bless. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless. Awesome. Really good question. Not easy, guys, when you get saved and you have all your friends in the world that used to drink with, party with, and do everything with. Like, I remember that. And then you get saved and you're on a different road and you're going one way, they're going another way. And inadvertently, inevitably, inevitably is a better word, I guess, you go a different direction. So it's not like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with you. You're not my friend anymore. It's just we're going in literally two different directions and it's kind of inevitable that you're going to draw apart from them. But it is sad. I had best friends that I spent, you know, 18 years with and 15 years with and 10 years every day hanging out with them like literally and i was with the girl for four years pretty much living with her and i broke up with her right when i got saved because again i was going after god she wasn't and my whole calling was at stake imagine if i stayed with her if i stayed with that girl i wouldn't be here right now i wouldn't be pre preaching i wouldn't be a christian i'd be back in the world right what i was doing what i used to be partying and doing all the foolishness so it's it's important that we follow our convictions and my conviction was to break up with her that was my conviction that i had to follow after yeah the lines are full guys like it says on screen we we have we're not gonna be able to get through everybody tonight we still have a good amount of people waiting in the waiting room here so yeah you got to be here in the beginning of the call unfortunately Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Gina Ruby Nunez and I'm calling from McAllen, Texas. How are you, Gina? I'm doing well. Um, good, I was good. What's going on tonight? Watching. Oh, so um, I'm calling because I had a question. I'm sorry, I don't know why I got nervous all of a sudden. It's okay, no worries. Hey, it's, um, it's no problem. <laughs> Um, I had a question about um, generational curses, um, and I asked this because my grandfather um, had witchcraft done to him because he also used to go see like a curandera, and then that was three generations ago. Now we're in generation three, the third generation, and my sister and I have renounced it and stood up, but my question was, does for that generational curse to end, the each of my siblings have to cancel it or i mean is it fine that we did it already i mean usually the way a generational curse happens is it gets passed on to the individual so it's not just like the whole family and if one person breaks it everybody breaks it it's usually like the individuals right so say like you know and even doctors know i think doctors believe more in generational curses than even the church does but for instance a doctor will say mm -hmm. hey cancer runs in your family we can't tell you why we don't know it just it runs in your family and your mom has it, your grandma, everybody has cancer, whatever infirmity, or hey, everybody, and we've all heard this, everybody in the family dies at 65, or like, hey, my grandma died at 66, my mom died at 66. Like you see these things go through generational lines and the individual usually has to break that curse, whether that's, now breaking a curse is not always praying, hey, I break this curse in Jesus name, I'm aware of it. Sometimes just serving God breaks the curse. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of yeah. people that, don't even know what a generational curse is that broke the generational curse. So it could be the curse of like alcoholism or teen pregnancy, which I've seen that over and over. Hey, everybody in my family gets pregnant at 15 or 16. Like I've seen families like that where there's seven girls that all got at the exact same age. It's that generational curse of teen pregnancy. So it goes very in depth, but just serving God could be enough to break the curse. There's other times where people are serving God, going after him, and there's still a curse there because remember, as I've taught this before, Jesus broke the curse of sin. That's the curse Jesus broke. And there's other curses in the Bible. In fact, there's over 250 mentions of curses in the Bible. So it's not like every curse is broken. 
there's still curses that we deal with that we're under like generational curses that just because Jesus died on the cross doesn't make every curse broken just like the devil's still around even though Jesus defeated him on the cross Jesus defeated the power but not the presence so he defeated the power of Satan but not the presence of Satan so there are still curses there that are prevalent in our lives so I would say again it's complex I don't have all the answers no one fully knows because we're talking about spiritual matters here that we only see through a lens darkly we don't have a full picture of but from my experience alone again this is just me some other guy might tell you something else I've seen it as the individual usually has to break it so if there's you know three kids in the family all of them have dealt with a generational curse of alcoholism and the the one of the girls in the family or one of the girls breaks it you know and she has two brothers it doesn't just break off her two brothers automatically they have to acknowledge okay. they have to go the only time i've seen it where it's like hey i broke it and it's broken is with children which that's a whole nother topic because even if you look at the people the two children jesus did deliverance on was the syrophoenician woman's daughter and the man at the uh, mount transfiguration both of those deliverances the parent brought the kid to jesus so let me rephrase it the mount transfiguration the father brought the boy to Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman, she came to Jesus saying, hey, will you deliver my daughter who's at home still? But my point is both of them brought their case to Jesus on behalf of their kids. So I personally believe you can break the curse in your life and it breaks off your children. But again, if you have siblings or family, I would say individually, they need to break it. Not always by, hey, praying and all the stuff we teach because our words are how we break things, right? Our words are how we do deliverance but also by, again, sometimes just serving God is enough to break those curses off of us of whatever it is, the curse is there. Okay, thank you so much for answering my question. Um, one more thing, I'm actually graduating from nursing school next week, so I was just um, wondering if maybe you could pray for me because it's gonna be a new chapter. Awesome, yes, first of all, congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. Um, and then definitely we'll pray for you. Thank you. Father, I thank you so much for my sister. I just pray, Lord, your blessing over this new adventure she's going to be on, this new destiny that she's going to be on, Lord, and this calling. Really, that's what it is. We know, Lord, that her purpose in life is not just to be a nurse, but it's to be a godly nurse. And I pray, Lord, that you would use her mightily in the medical field. I pray, Lord, you'd use her to lay hands on the sick. You'd use her to deliver those that are in bondage. You'd use her to bring light and healing and wholeness to that whole community at whatever hospital she gets hired at. I pray, Lord, you'd give her favor in the hiring process and the testing when she takes all of her exams and everything she's doing right now. I pray, Lord, that you would empower her you would be with her that holy spirit you are the helper in every area of life you are the helper so i just pray lord that you would help my sister that you would be with my sister and that you would bless her in this new adventure that she's going on this new chapter in her life be with her god use her for your glory for your name's sake just protect her and guard her and guide her in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so awesome. much brother have a good night yes god bless you take care and god, god bless. bless you too bye. Awesome. god bless I want to also just note guys when it comes to curses and demons and all that we all go like we all see through a lens darkly so we're all figuring it out we're all learning we're all studying to show ourselves approved and not a, a lot of the stuff when it comes to the details are not explicitly in scripture because the bible is not exhaustive how many of you know it's not every answer of everything you could ever l ask for but it does give us guidelines on these things and so you know the bible does talk about curses passed down from generation to generation and so yeah some people don't believe in generational curses i've encountered them before not only in my own life but in others lives and i've watched god break them and i know they're a real thing and so uh, we have a video on generational curses a video on curses that gives a lot of the biblical backing on what is a curse what curse did jesus break on the cross all that type of stuff but don't be mistaken the curse of sin has been broken on the cross if you accept jesus if you accept what he did on the cross and follow him and lay down your life pick up your cross the curse of sin is broken let's be clear on that if again if you surrender if you haven't surrendered your life the bible says you're already condemned and you're under the curse of sin and death okay let's take our next caller thank you so much for calling in please let me know your name and where you're calling in from awesome i made it through my name is kiara and i'm calling from seattle washington how are you kiara i'm great how are you i'm doing good what's going on tonight uh, so, um, where to begin? So, okay, actually, um, about a year ago, well, I gave birth last year to my eighth, my eighth child. And, um, after that I came down with like, it was weird. It was like a virus or something. It was weird. My, where my, my, my left side of my face, so like started to twitch 
And um, and then uh, I went to the do- I went to the, actually the ER, and they were saying, well, have you ever had a Bell's palsy, you know, or have you ever had like a cold sore? And I was like, no, never in my life. And then they're like, well, you know, I give you some of this like this medication that they prescribe for people, you know, who actually uh, have would have contracted that. But they said that since you have so many kids, you know, this would probably make you tired. And you know, I they pretty much said that I stay away from it and just get rest and it'll go away by itself. So, you know, I was like, okay. So anyways, after that, um, after that, I, I prayed and I was like, God, you know, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, you know, why is my body going through this? And, you know, um, I saw a regular doctor, they ran blood tests. They're like, you're fine. I said, okay, I feel like I'm fine. And so then I saw a naturopath and, um, she was saying, oh, well, you know, it sounds like you have, um, or she actually did some tests and she was like, um, she said, you actually have these viruses, and I don't want to even name the viruses. Um, and I said, well, how was that? You know, and I'm like, I haven't even had I contract that. None of my, my, none of my kids have that. My husband doesn't have that. And it was to the point where I was actually like slapping my face, like in public. And because I had these like twitches everywhere. And I'm like, is this ALS? Is this MS? So, you know, I'm like praying, I'm rebuking like the spirit of iniquity, you know, just like everything. And, um, it was just so insane. I still have it even now. And my naturopath was, you know, she was um, prescribing like all these like natural supplements. And I said, okay. So anyways, um, like I said, I prayed, I fasted and I still go through it even now. And um, uh, the, actually the first time I actually prayed and fasted um, ever, ever in my life was actually about um, uh, maybe like three, four months ago. And in my dream, I know I'm not, you're not here to interpret dreams. I know that I heard that. That's okay. But um, in my dream, but in my dream, um, it was so bizarre. Um, it was this, um, in my dream, it was like this like little like centipede and it came from like, it was like coming from my, my thigh and it came up very, uh, slowly. And then I knew it felt my presence looking at it. So then it tried to seep back down in my leg. So then like, I pretty much like snatched it up real quick and threw it. And then it came back with a vengeance with like, you know, um, uh, like gnarly teeth and it just looked very demonic and I'm mm. like well what is that and I'm like I'm like you know I'm like is this because I heard about you know spirits of um, witchcraft and spirits of, of scorpion snakes and stuff like that but I'm like what is it so I you know I never like actually like had anyone pray over me on that or like but I asked God you know I'm like Lord you know please like deliver me from the spirit of the, the, um, the centipede or whatever this is but I'm still going through all these battles. And I remember a long time ago, um, I, I feel like God does have a plan for my life because a long time ago, before I was even thinking about having kids, I was actually on a plane to Maryland visiting my friend and this random woman, she was actually going to a church conference, this older woman. I sat next to her cause you know, you're on planes and you know, people you don't know, you know, you sit next to, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And she was telling, you know, right. And she was like talking to me and you know, mid conversation, uh, cause we're having, cause I told her my beliefs in God and stuff like that. But mind you, I wasn't really like, I don't want to say I wasn't, I believed in God, right? You know, love God with church, stuff like that, you know, but I wasn't like, um, I was, I want to say like save, you know what I mean? I was still going out, hanging out, you know what I mean? Like doing the yeah. secular kind of stuff. Right. So, um, but she was like sitting, you know, talking to me, you know, mid conversation. She was like, you know, God has a word for me, for, for you. And I said, oh, okay. You know, I'm like, what is it? And she's like, you know, you're going to be a very mighty woman of God with a lot, with many, many kids. And I'm like, okay, like, wow. I don't have any kids. I'm not thinking about kids, but I have eight kids. And well, I, after eight my kids kid, now. Like, eight kids, well, nine, well, nine with my stepdaughter. But yeah, but I was like, no way, you know, because I was like, when after I had my fourth or fifth kid, I'm like, wait a minute, it, you know, it made me think about that dream, that what that um that recollection of the woman on the plane. I'm like, okay, so God, like, you know, there there is something for me. And then uh, and then like a week ago, um, I, I went to this um, I man, I just feel like I'm just getting attacked. I went to this uh game place with my kids my two boys and I went into um I should have known better too because I, I really believe that like um when you like actually um expose your kids like even like to ghost games you're like opening up a portal or a doorway for you know demons and whatever else to come in and uh even um whoever's been in there you know as well too you know familiar spirits you know so I, I feel like I should have known better but I went into this game place with my kids and um, after I left, I just felt so angry. Like, and I'm like, why am I so angry? Like everything made me so angry. Mind you, on top of the fact that I'm dealing with all this craziness with my body and knowing that dream I had. And then uh, randomly, this woman I know called me and she said, I had a dream about you, Kiara. And I said, okay, well, what is it? I'm already aggravated anyways, right? And, um, and she's like, I had a dream that you were very angry. And she just told me those whole dream. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am angry. 
So I'm like, God, like, you know, there is purpose for me, you know, what's going on with me. So she prayed with me over me, you know, I, I mean, I, and I felt better. I actually felt like I was breathing heavy when she was talking with me and like whatever I was having the anger, whatever spirit, whatever it was coming out. And so anyways, um, but, I, but I still, I still have the issues with my body. Like, it's just like twitching and feeling weird and burning sensations. And I went to the doctor and I remember, you know, I don't know if it was one of your, um, your shows, you're, you're talking about how, like, you know, if you, um, if you get like, if you go to the doctor and they say nothing is wrong with you, then it's probably a spirit or a demon, you know, or whatnot. But I'm just like, father, like, I feel like that now I'm thinking like that dream that I had, what is the significance of it? I'm still battling these things. And uh, I'm trying to live right for you. I'm trying to be a godly woman. I'm trying to raise these kids the right way. I'm trying to be a godly wife. You know, like, Father, please place me where, where I need to be and what I need to do and where I should go. You know, and it, which it goes back to church, too. Like, we used to do Sabbath, you know, and it's just like, you know, uh, my husband and I, we were battling, like, going from Sabbath and how, you know, people who kept, um, you know, the Ten Commandments, you know, like, it was great, you know, because it seemed like everyone was just focused on the right way to live life. And not saying that not doing Sabbath is wrong, but it just seemed like everyone is kind of morally off now. And now it's like we're trying to find a right church. And I can't find a, like a right church that feeds me the word or the kids. And that, I feel like that's a spirit too, trying to keep me from fellowshipping with people. So I just feel like we're just getting it or I'm getting attacked all over. So that's kind of like my story a little bit. So yeah, yeah. So was your so is your main question? I just want to make sure that I I answer you directly. Was it like are these ticks okay. that you're going through? A, a, could they possibly be a spirit? Is that what you're curious about? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. So you, pretty much. Yeah. It, yeah especially I mean, with that dream with the, the centipede and all that stuff. Y- it's yes. Crazy. What's crazy is there's been a huge rise of people having ticks. Um, it's like a big trend on TikTok. You've probably seen before where people have like ticks oh, no, and Tourette's. No yeah, well, it's like a big wow. thing right now. People are getting it. And and what I'm reading articles about it, and they're saying like young girls and young men are getting ticks and Tourette's at an unprecedented rate. And you could research this. Like, wow. they don't know why. They can't explain it. People are getting this. But the crazy part is, what I want to touch on yeah. is the Tourette's or the ticks are usually, in a lot of the cases I'm reading about and like looking at, are like slapping themselves, cussing, saying vulgar things, and like abuse, self-abuse. And all these things, like something that it's, it's why if it's a sickness, why is it trying to hurt you? Or why is it trying to cuss? Or why is it always something dark or something demonic or the, the, the right. ticks or the Tourette's or whatever it is that's, that's happening. So I think a lot of these are demonic. Honestly, I know that touches on yeah. a massive nerve. Of course, not everything's demonic. Of course, some of these are neurological. Some of these are sicknesses, but I just think that if it is a sickness or neurological, why is it for so many of these young people? Is it abusive? Mm-hmm. Is it self-destructive? Is it cursing? Is it dark? Is it saying, you know, I'm going to kill you? Or like the, t- the tick will say something super vulgar or super dark. If it's just sickness, right. why is it so dark? And why is it trying to hurt? And why is it like have the characteristics of a demon? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not out of the realm of possibility all that you're going through, that there could have been an open door, something from your past. I mean, listen, trauma is an open door to spirits. I have family that have been demonized from having trauma. We all go through trauma. Like we all go through things right. in life that are traumatic, whether it's a birth, a really hard birth, or whether it's something in the hospital with one of our kids or like traumatic experiences become these open doors for spirits to come come in and it sounds well how is that fair well the devil's not fair it's they're always looking for a way in but there's with trauma there's anxiety there's stress there's fear there's terror there's dread these are all things that open doors to demons like fear is a spirit the bible says like i'm not saying it the bible says it so it could have been that there was a door open somehow through all the stuff that you're going through through all the stuff you're describing and you just need to get Mm -hmm. deliverance you need to get freedom and there could be a spirit of infirmity there where it's like hey i'm having all these pain sensations like the lady in luke 13 she's been over 18 years nobody knows why what's going on well it was directly because of a spirit it wasn't medicine she needed wasn't therapy she needed it was deliverance so like it's right. not out of the realm of possibility. Even what I'm going through right now with like my neck and my nerve and my, uh, I'm having like a muscle spasm issue. Like I'm definitely going to have someone pray over me for deliverance. Like why wouldn't I, what am I going to lose by yeah. going to, to get freedom? The worst thing that's going to happen right. is there's no demon. The best thing that's going to happen is I get free, but sitting at home and never like being proactive about 
uh, other things where seeing a chiropractor, I'm also going to do that. Getting a massage chair, I'm also right. doing that. Going to deliverance, I'm also doing that. Like, I'm not going to rule any of these things out because it could be something a chiropractor could fix, but it could also be a demon attacking okay. me. Or So for you, get on the map, find someone, get a deliverance going. I know Vlad's church is in Washington you know, in Pasco, go out to one of his delivery right. services and get there, get yourself in a place where they're willing to go after this and tell them, hey, I'm having ticks or Tourette's, however you want to say it, doesn't matter. And I think it could be a spirit. Would you just command this yeah, thing out of me and then that. and see what happens there? <laughs> Stop. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that, well, yeah, I mean, I figured that too, to get deliverance, but like, what do you think about that synapy dream? Do you think that was like a, maybe something from God? I mean, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Say it again. Okay. Oh no, sorry, my husband's in the background. Um, yeah, I mean, so, it, could, it actually, could be. So, I, I can't tell you for sure, but it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like anything good. You know what I mean? When I think of centipede, you talk about like snakes and scorpions that we trample on, according to Luke. Um, it could be something demonic like that as well. But for me, I mean, if I'm okay. desperate, I'm going to exhaust all options. I'm not just going to say, oh, it's this or that. I'm going to be like, let me try. Let me try. Let the man and see. go. Okay. And then actually I do have one more question. I know that, I don't know if that was pretty long or not, but yeah, um, you just got to go quick on it. Cause we do got people waiting here. Okay. Ray, what is your question? So anyways, my husband, like he had a, oh, maybe he should call him. But anyways, he had a question and he wanted to know, well, he doesn't believe in deliverance. And, uh, and so, and he was saying that a Christian can only be, um, delivered if pretty much they're not saved and they're not a Christian. So pretty much it's just like, you know, obviously, if you're saved, then you don't have demons in you because we were battling this back and forth because yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, ask, I need deliverance. But he thinks that if you supposedly believe in God, yeah, if you believe in God yeah, and you're saved, Come on. this is a good question for anybody. You have people waiting in line. You can't be sitting there for two hours. Hello? No, no, no. I love this question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So anyways, but he was just saying, well, like, like I was, I'm on the phone. But anyways, he was just saying that if, I mean, just to reiterate again, if you believe in God and you're saved, right? Then mm -hmm. you cannot have a demon in your pure inside. And, you know, I told him to listen to your videos and I said, I believe otherwise. I feel like, you know, obviously if you're on the route to being saved or you want to be closer to God, or let's say you had a bad past or whatever, you have these like demons, like, you know, following you around, you know, obviously you do have demons, you need to be delivered, but he doesn't believe that. So I'm wondering how, how can not persuade him, but how can I make him understand or actually open up the Bible and actually see that you know other otherwise it's true what you're saying yeah well number one there's no scripture in the bible that says a christian can't have a demon number two right deliverance is the children's bread according to jesus so the children are his children it's not for the world and the reason why i could prove to you it's not for the world basically jesus said if a demon goes out of a person and the person's house doesn't get filled then the demon comes back yeah. with seven of its friends more wicked than itself so imagine if you'd only do deliverance on unbelievers the demons are just going to come back mm -hmm. so there's no there's there's no point in doing it. And the way you fill someone's house is by the Holy Spirit. So if the, the person gets delivered, the demons are not able to come back because the person's full of God, full of the Holy Spirit. Now, can a Christian have a demon? Well, if you look at Acts chapter five, Ananias was filled with Satan and he was a Christian. He gave up, sold his house and was filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter four. If you look at Peter, was Peter a Christian? He was filled with Satan. Judas was an apostle and Satan entered Judas. Um, Paul says, don't let, don't be bewitched. So if you look at Galatians, like they were able to be bewitched. Uh, he talks about being careful for deceiving spirits. If a Christian can't have a demon, why would we need to be careful of deceiving spirits? And then at the end of the day, let, you, let me just say this. If a Christian can't have a okay. demon, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so if a Christian can't have a demon, then there's no point in deliverance. And my point okay. by that is we can just get them saved. Once they become a Christian, there's no more demons, if that's the logic we're using. So there would be no point in casting out demons, which would make Jesus' ministry you. irrelevant or the, the disciples wrong. So if Jesus was wrong and the disciples are wrong, then yeah, we don't need deliverance. But Jesus cast out demons. Matthew 10, he commands the 12. Luke 10, he commands the 72. Mark 16, all believers. Acts chapter 8, Philip, the only named evangelist in all of scripture, cast out demons from people that heard the gospel and responded to the gospel. Um, Acts 16, demons were cast out of the girl. Acts 19, handkerchiefs were casting out demons with just Paul's handkerchief. So again, it's either we're right and Jesus and Paul are wrong or we're wrong right. when we think... Deliverance isn't for today. And the answer is we're wrong if we think deliverance isn't for today because there's nowhere in the Bible where it ended. There's nowhere it stopped. It was a command Jesus gave and it's 
it's continuing on today. And the only people we do deliverance on, which we've done thousands, are on on believers. Because again, why deliver an right. unbeliever when the demons are just going to come right back? True. But I do have I a video where it, I give a bunch uh, of verses and a bunch of arguments if he wants to check out and just look at those scriptures as well. Oh, yeah, I'll have him uh, sit through and watch all those. Hey, awesome. Isaiah, I got a quick question. Yes, sir. Hey, real quick, I'm her husband. Do you need deliverance? Who, me? Yeah. I mean, I might. I've been delivered before. I definitely, every so often, every year or two, get prayer and get deliverance to make sure nothing's there. So it's a requirement. No, it's not a requirement, but it helps us live a, a better Christian life. Because you could you could live a Christian life and die and go to heaven and struggle your whole life with temptations and desires and things enticing you, or you can get but we're free. Tempt we're, we're tempted all the time. Everywhere you go, everywhere you walk. So you can't be 100%. So do you need to be delivered every single time? No, because— Or as a born-again Christian walking in the Spirit, like the Bible says, you're not going to—you're going to have those temptations. Because, you know, Paul had temptations with, with lust. So do you need to be delivered all Paul, the time, Paul, left and Paul, right, left and right? Paul didn't have temptations with lust. Where's that in the Bible? That's not in the Bible. It's, it's, uh -huh. Yes, he did. No, he, no there's yes, no scripture did. that says Paul battled desires of lust. Yep, lasciviousness. Where's that? Can you can you point to it in scripture? Just so I can look it up, because oh, I'm well, curious. I don't, I don't have faith. Okay, How about I'll, this? I'll look it up after. How about this? How about this? I'm going to pull out the scriptures. I'm not going to top your line. You and I can discuss this off the line or on the line. It doesn't really matter. But I'm asking you a simple question. Do everybody need deliverance every single time, or is it only for non-believers? Of non course not. No, of course not. There's people that have flesh, and you can't cast out the flesh, and you can't crucify a demon. So if you're dealing with the flesh, you need to crucify your flesh by prayer, fasting, and the word, which is why every person I've talked to tonight, I ask I agree, them first, yeah. do you pray, do you read? Before I ask them, do they need deliverance, I ask them, do they pray and do they read? And like I talked to the last lady, she prays and reads hours a day and still has all these ungodly desires. So then you probably need to get deliverance. So it's pretty simple. I mean, if you have a demon, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't just fast it out or you can't just work harder or work more if there's a demon there then you need to get delivered. Okay. That, that's what Jesus did. So for you to say deliverance isn't for today, you're saying that Jesus shouldn't have done deliverance. Why did Jesus cast their demons? Why did Philip cast their demons? Did Why Jesus did Paul tell cast his their disciples demons? To, did Jesus tell his disciples to uh, yep. Matthew do deliverance 10. on people? Matthew 10. Go read it. Luke 10. Go yeah, read it. Mark 16. It says he gave them power to cast their demons, and they went out and cast their demons. And then Luke 10, the 72 cast their demons and came back and said, even the demons obey us in your name. And then in Mark 16, 17, it says those that believe will cast out demons. And then in Acts chapter 8, Philip, the only named evangelist in scripture, according to Acts 20, cast out demons. Acts 16, Paul cast out demons. Acts 19, okay, Pete, you're Paul's going handkerchiefs. Like, you, and my wife, you and my wife are like really quick on talking. It, it, it's, it's so much scripture. I got to write it down. I got to look yeah, at it. Yeah, go back. And hey, see. do this. Right. Go, go watch like my I, video. Like, Go watch my video on I, I've watched Christian. The videos. Yeah, you're great. You're doing a, you're doing a great thing out there. I appreciate it. Um, I'm glad that my wife got on because that's usually when you call in, you're waiting for three hours. So she she was on top of it. But um, regarding uh, Paul, let's yeah. If you have like I said, I don't want to tie up the line. If there's an email, I'll email you, and then we can discuss this. Yeah, absolutely. I have an email right on my YouTube. If you go to contact. But I will say this. Okay. The video I have hey, on this? Christians having this? demons. Hold on, let me talk real quick here. Yeah. The Christians I have oh. the video I have on Christians having demons, it has fifteen plus verses. So go to those verses and study those. Um, but yeah, I have it all laid out there for yeah, you. Yeah, I am gonna study. And there's people that there's people that you've debated that don't believe in that. So the thing is is that But the problem is the Bible doesn't teach hundred percent hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's finish. the problem. Let, Isaiah, let me finish. Isaiah, let me finish. What I'm saying is that you have your side of it. Other people have their side of it. Whatever you're saying, I'll watch that video and I'll look at it and then go from there. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, we got to side with God's word, not my side or somebody else's Everybody side. Everybody has. Why there's so many churches out here? Well, so you what just church is right? What about the homosexual church? What about the Mormons? What about the Jehovah they're Witness? Wrong. What? They're, they're wrong. all wrong. How do you know yes. they're wrong? How because, do you know they're wrong? Because John 10, Jesus said... If I do miracles, they have John 10 in their Bible too. They don't do miracles. The Mormon Church doesn't do miracles. Muslims don't they're, do miracles. You said Hindus John 10. Do... They have John 10 too. So their John 10 is different than your John 10. No, they have the same right? John 10. They just don't believe they have extra biblical curriculum. Right. What do you so everybody has their own ways of viewing things. No, the Book of Mormon just is like if you false. if you went to if you went to a, if you if you came across some black Hebrew Israelites, they will 
probably cut you up and destroy you, even though the words are wrong, because you believe in what you believe in. They believe in what they want to believe in. Uh, no, actually, I thing, debated a black right? Hebrew Israel like a week ago, and he ended up had nothing to say. So, what? yeah, you're actually wrong on that. So is Sabbath, is Sabbath required? All right, man. Well, hey, I have the video. Check it out. I'm not going to debate with you on a call-in show. You can check out the video, and then okay, if you want to hey, email me, Let you me can. give you my email. Let me give you my email. Okay, I'll write it down Send right here. Send me over those verses. Okay, it's Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, Armani, okay. A-R-M, as in Mary, A, and as in Nancy, I, at AOL.com. Please email me all those verses you just well, mentioned. I don't have to email you. I have them on a video. I have them on a video already. You could just okay, watch the video. Link. Yeah, send me the link. I got you. It's hey, please, can we, let me ask you a up. question. Let me hey, ask you a question. I'll hang up. I'll hang up. I'll hang up. I'll hang up. Hold on. Last thing. Please, when you send an email, it's not from one a, a secretary or somebody. It, hopefully, it's from you. Yeah, I'll email you. That's no problem. Hopefully. Okay. I but let me that. ask you a question. Do you need deliverance? No, I don't. Um, so you, do, you don't have right anything, now, any God thoughts is, in your head, anything that no, attacks you, any no. voices, any desires? I think, I'm a, well, I run a business. Uh, the thing that I don't really battle with, I think it's a blessing. Uh, just throughout the years, I'm a businessman growing and growing and growing. Um, God just changed my life years ago. That's why obviously popping out eight kids back to back to back. But outside of that, I don't really, I don't need the de deliverance. Um, if you need deliverance, that's different. But I don't believe that if you're saved, you don't need deliverance. But you don't. But the problem is you don't, you don't believe you're that. But the, you, you have no scripture to support but that. But I do believe problem. that you. There are temptations. There's, there's there's temptations everywhere you walk, everywhere you go. You know, you can't control that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but how how do you say that when you didn't even know Jesus commanded the disciples to cast out demons? How could you say that Jesus you have? Jesus can command anything he wants. He can command anything he wants. That's Jesus. No, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm telling Jesus you, you didn't, you didn't even know that was in the Bible. So that's what I'm trying to say. You didn't even know Jesus commanded them. It doesn't in matter 10. about what well, it doesn't matter what I know. What I'm, what I'm asking you is what you believe in Isaiah and what the next church down the street believes in is they read the same Bible, but their beliefs is different than your beliefs. Okay. Right? All right, man. Well, I'll definitely email you and then I'll, I'll send you that link to the video. Right, you can okay. check out. Okay. Let's do that. God bless right, you. Take Thank care. You. All right. Bye -bye. God bless. You too. All right. Well, that was interesting. Praise the Lord. I'll email him after and I'll send him the video that he could watch. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's take the next caller here. I'm not going to say anything because he's not on the line. So it would be unfair for me to give my opinion, but amen. I'll send his email. Guys, don't, don't email him, please. I know you guys all got the email. Don't spam him. Don't email him. I'll email him the link to the video. I don't know why my on-screen chat just became huge and it won't, it won't go smaller. Let me see something. Give me a second. It took off here and covered my whole screen. I don't know if it covered the whole screen for you guys as well. I love how when we start debating and arguing, the viewership jumps up like 300 people. All right, hold on. Uh, give me a second. Let me see if this will work now. I don't know why my thing went off screen. We just got to be gracious with everybody, guys, and be patient and be kind and uh, not get in the flesh because it's super easy to do. Okay, that's not going to work. I don't know why. Oh, well, the viewership's not working. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I'm reading your guys' comments. Okay. Let's go to the next caller here. Angela should probably be our last one because we have been live for an hour and a half and I got a bunch of stuff I got to get done today. The, the whole thing is if you don't even know that Jesus cast commanded disciples to cast out demons, um, yeah, then there's not much debating we can do there. Hello? Angela, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How's it going? Sorry you intense. had to follow sorry you had to follow that. <laughs> no worries. I was like, I've got a couple of quick questions. No and worries. I will be quick, I no, no, you're good. No worries. How are you doing tonight? Ah, yeah, good. It's um yeah, morning over here in Brisbane. So Oh, Australia, um, okay. I would love to get out to Australia someday. It would be awesome if you could. We need you. Awesome. <laughs> What's going on tonight? Um, so I've read Revelation a couple of times, um, and last night I stumbled across something saying that, um, like all the, the seals and the trumpets and the bowls, um, are all in order according to the Song of Moses. So then I read, obviously, the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, 
Is that correct? Is that like all the bowls and seals and trumpets all come out at like that? It's not like all the trumpets one by one followed by all the bowls one by one. Um, I I haven't heard that before. Where is that? You said Deuter Deuteronomy thirty two. Yeah. I haven't heard that. I'll have to do some research on that. Yeah, I don't know that they're in order. I mean, I heard just a guy last week that was teaching Revelation because I'm, you know, I'm obviously love the book of Revelation. I'm interested talking about how they're all poured out the trumpets, the I'm sorry, the seals, the trumpets, the bowls all at one time. I've always learned, studied, got taught, read commentaries that they were in succession, but they weren't all at the exact same time. I don't believe they're personally all at one time like this guy was teaching. But again, there's so many interpretations of the bowls, the trumpets, the seals that I haven't heard that before, that they're in order from Deuteronomy 32. Yeah, I hadn't heard it either. So it kind of blew my mind. And yeah, I just wondered if you had heard anything about it and your take on it. So maybe No, just are, they, are they in Deuteronomy 32? Yeah, reading the Song of Moses, so I was flicking between like... Um, obviously the verses in there and then going back to Revelation and it ties in really well. So oh, I'll I have know. to check that Maybe out. That's just, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out tonight. Can I ask a quick yeah, other question? Yeah, go for it. Um, so Daniel, where we've got the Antichrist setting up in Israel and, you know, the abomination of desolation. Um, I'll give you the actual... Daniel I was going to say, I don't have all my uh, revelation notes, yeah. so you might, if you're going to ask me yeah, something technical, I'm, I, I, don't, I might not have a good answer for you just on the live. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there and maybe okay. you do. No, maybe you don't. Um, Daniel 11, 36, 37, um, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods. He shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other God, for he shall magnify himself above all. He shall honor the God of fortresses instead. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, who is the God beloved by women and who is the God of fortresses? Yeah, so from my understanding, this is speaking of the Antichrist, right? That will exalt himself in the temple, claim to be God himself, um, mm. and, and what part are you confused on? You said the, instead of them, so you'll honor says, a God of fortress. Yes. So do you, who is the God of fortresses? Do you have any idea? I don't have an offhand them? interpretation on it. I'll ha I would have to yeah. go back into my revelation notes on when I did my teaching on the antichrist, but yeah, a God to his ancestors, he will honor with gold and silver, precious stones, costly gifts. Um, yeah, mm. for my understanding, this would be talking about the antichrist, but I don't know who the God of fortress it's describing or I'd have to do some research on that. Okay. All right. That's Daniel 11. Okay. I'm going to save that too as well and check that out. <laughs> okay. And then Thank can you. I ask one? Yeah, one go for question? it. Go for it. Um, like the OG of deliverance, Derek Prince, um, like his take on spirits, he called them disembodied personalities coming from a pre-Adamic race. Do you agree? Oh man, that's a really good question. Um, there's two schools of thought for those of you that are like, what is she talking about? Is number one, is they're fallen angels. Demons are fallen angels. Obviously one third of the angels rebelled, were cast down to the earth, that whole thing. The other idea, and no one knows 100%, the other idea is they are disembodied spirits of the Nephilim who were basically fallen angels that slept with women and had children who were the champions or like the Greek goddesses, the men of renown, the men of fame. And these were tall giants. They were hybrids, humans and, and fallen angels. And when they died because they weren't legitimate people or legitimate, like they weren't registered people that their spirits are demons, the spirits of the Nephilim. So that, that's a whole teaching. I have like a two hour video on that. Um, that's, that's, as you said, that's what Derek Prince believed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know he believed that. I, I've read most all his books and listened to a lot of his teachings. I know Don Dickerman, who's done over 10,000 deliverances, believes they're fallen angels. And I know Derek Prince is a great man of God that did tons of deliverances and taught. So it's hard because I've heard both. I've heard both sides of the story. One reason why I, I've I've teetered on the idea of they are are they are the spirits of the Nephilim is because 
I used to think like, why would a fallen angel be called lust, right? Like why would a fallen angel be named lust or addiction or bitterness or resentment? But the, the problem with that theory that I had for years was I'm now learning or fully realizing that names of demons are functions, not actual names. And what I mean by that, I'm trying to like make this very simple because I know I could sound confusing when I, we talk about this. When I get, when I was born, my parents named me Isaiah. There's only one Isaiah Saldivar. Like I'm the only Isaiah Saldivar that will ever exist, right? So that's a, that's a unique name. Demons don't have unique names in the sense that there's not only, there's not like a spirit of lust and there's only one and he's unique. The spirit of lust, his name is lust because that's his actual function. He actually mm. causes people to lust. And so when you say, what is your name? He's not saying his unique name. He's saying, this is my function, lust or Legion or Jezebel. It's not just like Jezebel as in like, that's the spirit from uh, book of Kings. And like, that's Jezebel reincarnated. No, Jezebel died and went to hell. Like the actual lady Jezebel, she died and went to hell. The spirit of Jezebel is a spirit that functions like Jezebel function. Does that make sense? So that will yes. help people because people think, how could you have a spirit of Ahab or Jezebel or Leviathan or anger? How, or how is a deaf and dumb spirit? How could you have it if somebody already had it in the Bible? These are the ways the demons function. A deaf and dumb spirit makes you deaf and dumb. A spirit of fear makes you fear. So when you ask a spirit, what is your name? And it says Jezebel, that's the spirit's name because that's the spirit's function. So that's why it's hard for me to say it's just the Nephilim or the angels because both cases you can make a really good argument for. And the Bible, again, doesn't make explicitly clear the origin of demons. It doesn't. We don't, we don't know like definitively. Um, they both sound good. Fallen angels, I would say, is more biblically accurate and makes more sense biblically, but also the Nephilim do make sense as well, right? So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a for sure answer. I know everybody teaches a different thing. I'm kind of right there in the middle with it. I, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter uh, where they came from or what they are. It is interesting to talk about and think about, but any any idea is just speculation because we don't have a definitive answer in scripture on what their origination of demons were. Okay, cool. Just but it's a good conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for asking. Thanks for answering. Cheers. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Take bye. care. All right, guys, we are going to call it there. Someone said you asked for that guy to answer because you say no one ever calls and disagrees with me. Guys, I honestly, I, I know I said I don't want to debate people, but I do want to get into, I would like to do an organized because like that debate, like me, like me and this guy debating over the phone, there's, there's usually no fruit in it, right? He's not going to be convinced. I'm not going to be convinced. Um, it's just, I have to take a deep breath and hold my flesh back because it makes me just want to, you know, own him with the Bible and say, this is what the Bible says, blah, 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 blah. But um, at the end of the day, like him saying, they have the same book. Catholics have their own Bible. Mormons have their own Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses have their own interpretation of the Bible. So none of them have the same Bible that we're using. And John 10 makes it clear that what signifies us as the truth is miracles. Jesus said, if you don't believe me, you believe the miracles. So again, we could debate and argue, but it doesn't bring fruit, especially on a live call where obviously he's, you know, he's, going through whatever he's going through so yeah but i do want to get into organized actual debates where i actually debate somebody like on a um how would i say it? a uh i don't know the word for it it's at the tip of my tongue an organized debate like an actual good real debate against a christian whether it's deliverance whether it's not it would be a good debate to have but yeah that's a time where you test your fruit when people like that are on the on, you're talking to them you just gotta you got to test the fruit. I had a debate with a guy who was in Hebrew Israelite not too long ago, and he was the same thing. Doesn't believe in deliverance, doesn't believe in this. And I gave him the verses and I said, well, what, what about that? that? That's the problem. You can't get away from deliverance because Jesus did it everywhere he went. I mean, last week I taught on all the deliverances Jesus did. So the end of the day is either you're right and Jesus is wrong or you're wrong and Jesus is right. And I know Jesus isn't wrong when it comes to deliverance. So you're wrong. Like that's the end of the day. One, somebody's wrong and it's not Jesus. So is not much of a debate there because it's like you can't debate deliverance it's literally in the scripture there's nowhere in the bible where it says a christian can't have demons yet there's tons of places where believers like uh judas or like peter or like ananias who sold his property was filled with satan so satan could fill you but a demon can't how about this paul said if you get angry you give place to the devil wait a minute paul christians can't have demons so where does the devil go if you give him a place so again we could go on for days. I already have videos on this. I just made a video of 25 counter arguments. So, amen. All right. 
Yeah, and the thing is, if you have pride, you can't be delivered. So anybody that has pride and you say, do you need deliverance? They're going to say, I don't need to get delivered. That's called pride that keeps you in bondage. And if you don't want to get delivered, you don't have to be delivered. You can live your whole life um, struggling with whatever it is you struggle with. But yeah, just don't say it's not for Christians because you're wrong. The Bible's not. Boom. The guy argued your 25 questions. Yeah, and his whole video was, that's not relevant. That's not relevant. Christians can't have demons. His, his, I watched his video. It had no substance. It was all just him saying Christians can't have demons. It was the same thing over and over, which is we were giving counter arguments. So you have to answer counter arguments. You don't just say Christians can't have demons. That's uh, the same thing. All right. If you guys want to give, you can. The links to give are there. Tonight has been good, guys. We've been live for an hour and 40 minutes. I do got stuff I got to get done. I've been a bit, I don't want to say under the weather, but a bit going through all this health stuff recently. So even today, I was feeling just not my neck, but I was just not feeling well. But I was like, you know what? Let me get on here and um, talk with you guys, minister to you guys. We didn't have our stream Tuesday. So yeah, I haven't been feeling too hot today. But honestly, I need to get my health together. I need to eat more and I need to eat better. I don't, I, hard, I literally hardly eat. So that's one reason why I'm, I have health issues as well. I need to get that in track and figure out what's going on there. And uh, I literally hardly ever eat. So it's an issue for sure. It's not healthy to not eat, amen. Yes, if you wanna give you can, the links are on screen and they're in the comments as well. Yeah, my neck and back are doing a lot better. I actually have no pain in my neck right now, which is incredible. I'm doing a lot better there. And so I appreciate you guys' prayer. I know God is healing me and uh i know i know it's happening but the whole eating thing definitely i need to pray about and i need to get i don't know if i need to get deliverance or I need to get healing or what but i have serious appetite issues by the stripes you're healed amen i receive that i receive that thank you jeffrey volman mikey de jesus anonymous said keep preaching don't let that stuff discourage you you helped change my life for the better thank you anonymous i promise you guys my promise to you is it doesn't affect me or discourage me because I'm standing on the word of God. If I didn't have the Bible to back me up, if I didn't have Jesus' ministry, the disciples' ministry, the book of Acts ministry, and the word of God to back me up, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. But I have so much of the word of God to back me up that it doesn't discourage me. All right. Uh, 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 and I am reading the chat. And I've been reading the chat the whole time. Okay. So, praise the Lord. And I will be emailing that guy tonight. I'll email him the video and he can watch it um, and then take what he wants from it. But yeah, just talk, arguing with people over a phone call is usually not very fruitful. Jeremy Split said, just watch the testimony of Bill Weeze you upload and I have to say, man, it's so good to be reminded of what Jesus saved us from. God bless, keep it up. If you haven't watched the video I just uploaded of Bill Weeze on the channel, I don't know why my, my view thing here is not working. I have something going on here tonight. Um, we'll get it fixed, it's no, bi it's no biggie. But yeah, something's going on there with that check out the video i posted yesterday with bill Weeze sharing at our church it was incredible i mean literally it was just amazing amazing story you need to hear it's really really good and then we'll be uploading a new video tomorrow and sunday and there'll be live monday and we'll have john ramirez on tuesdays a lot of content coming at you guys we appreciate you guys liking it commenting subscribing being in the discord sewing into the broadcast thank you Uh, if you can answer a quick question, anonymous donation said, I had someone tell me it was okay to live in sin, saying Paul lived in sin with a thorn in his flesh. My understanding of scripture was always been that it was a demon. Any input? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting verse. Paul says that I've been given a, mess a messenger of Satan, which would be a demonic spirit to buffet me. Some people say, well, it's just per people persecuting Paul. But if you look at the text, it actually does appear to be a demonic spirit or a spirit that's attacking Paul or however you want to word it um but yeah it wasn't paul saying i live in sin for sure paul never used a license to sin never gives a license to sin and the guy that was just on the call saying oh paul said he dealt with lust that's not in the bible so yeah and then you ask him where's that in the bible he doesn't know so again you can't really debate people that are going to say make claims that the, the bible says this and then they don't even know where it says in the bible you probably shouldn't say the bible says this if you don't know where it says it in the bible just like i say jesus commanded the disciples to cast out demons and then he goes no he didn't where's that in the bible matthew 10. like you need to know where it is in the bible if you're going to say the bible says this and then if you say the bible doesn't say that you should also be sure the bible doesn't say that yvette perez thank you Say God bless uh to you and your family isaiah thank you yvette adriana martinez thank you so much for the donation but yeah, 
<laughs> I don't want to say more because I don't want to be rude, but I just have to hold, bite my tongue and just take the humble route and take the low road and just, amen. Okay, yeah, but for sure the thorn in the flesh, I don't know exactly what it was, but I, I lean more towards it was a spirit. Some say a sickness. Some say it was Paul's wife. That's not true. It was not Paul's wife. I don't, I don't know, but could have been a spirit there to keep Paul humble, just like God gave the prophets a lying spirit. God literally put a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets in the Old Testament. So God can put a spirit on someone or in somebody because God can do whatever he wants. Um, people say, well, God can't make people sick because God doesn't have sickness. I used to say that until I started reading the Bible and studying the New Testament and realizing God can do whatever he wants. So God can definitely give somebody a sickness if God wanted to, because God can do whatever he wants. I don't think God does that to punish people in that. But um, again, we have to be careful when we say God can't do something. Do you watch sports? I don't, Zach. I'm not a sports fan, to be honest with you. Not a sports fan. Mm -mm -mm. Eddie Duenez, what do you mean by that comment, brother? I'm interested in what your comment means. Because I don't understand what that means. Someone says, was Paul married? Not to my knowledge. Um, no, he wasn't married. Patrick, thank you. Said, are crucifix bad for Christians or it doesn't matter because it still represents Jesus? Um, as long as Jesus is not on the cross, it does represent what he did on the cross and it's okay to have as a symbolism, but I, I, I don't, wouldn't wear, I personally wouldn't wear a cross. I was looking for Eddie, your comment. I didn't understand what you meant by your gospel. But there was a lot of comments, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to read them all. Yeah, Apostle Paul was not married. He was single. Martin, thank you so much. Claudia, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I will pray for your son and I appreciate your prayers. Uh, I see anonymous prayer. Troy Jones, thank you for remaining strong in the Lord. Jesus Christ giving all truth order. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know you guys were probably looking at my face when the, when I was on that call and I was, I was uh, when he was talking, I was kind of like, yeah, I was trying to just be polite and you know what I mean? Be, be uh, patient. You got to be patient, guys. The way God's patient with us, we got to be patient with people. No, I don't think cross necklaces are wrong. Maisley, thank you so much for that generous donation. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's the biggest donation we've ever received. Thank you so much, Maisley. It really means a lot. We really appreciate you, Maisley. Uh, if you guys don't know who the Maisleys are on YouTube, they're an awesome, awesome family. Thank you, Maisley family. I'm pretty sure it is the Maisleys that, and I hope I'm saying your last name right, but thank you guys. I really appreciate you. They got a really massive YouTube channel, awesome family. They're going after God. Thank you so much, Maisley family. Really, really, really appreciate that. That's that's I, literally the biggest um, donation that we've ever received. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Means a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm probably going to jump off here, guys, in a minute. I'm not feeling too well, to be honest with you guys. I was super nauseous earlier for some reason, for some weird reason. I'm not, like, sick, but uh, I'm just really nauseous today for some reason. Lots of comments coming in. Why wouldn't you wear a cross? I just personally wouldn't. I just I just personally wouldn't. It's just my own, my own taste. Uh, Isaiah, did you see the... I'm not sure if you're talking about the guy that had a dream about me. I did watch that and responded to it, but I don't, I don't know who the other guy you're talking about. I'll look it up though. Isaiah has tattoos covered through his titles. What does that mean? I don't have any tattoos. What do you mean? Isaiah has covered tattoos. Look through his time. Oh, Isaiah's covered tattoos. I used to say Isaiah's covered tat with tattoos. I was like, no, I'm not. Yeah, I've, I've talked about tattoos before. Uh, what notes, Evangelist Jonna, do you mean? Thank you, Maisley family. So ma such a major um, donation. I really appreciate you. Generous, generous, generous. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. I already have a tattoos thing. I'm not going to talk about it again and stir everybody up. Yeah, I do need to eat for sure. Thank you for teaching us so much. You're welcome. How's the family doing? They're doing great. 
They're doing great. Thanks for asking. Jared Herrera, thank you. Say, God bless Isaiah. Your videos was awesome tonight. Hope you feel better, brother. Much love. Thank you, Jared. And guys, listen. I know my haters are like, oh, Isaiah's sick. Oh, Isaiah has neck pains. Where's your God to heal him? I already know by being vulnerable and telling you guys, like, I'm in pain or I'm going through this. I know that it, it gives haters fuel and ammo. I don't care. I want to be honest, transparent, vulnerable, and human. I want you guys to realize I'm a human just like you. I don't ever want to be like this guy that puts on this facade that I'm something I'm not. So, yeah, I've made a decision in my life that I'm going to be honest, vulnerable, transparent, and a normal human and not paint a picture like a lot of guys do that I'm something that I'm not. So I hope you guys could see that in how I share with you guys stuff I go through and all that. Jennifer Albanese, thank you so much. So thank you for leading me to Jesus during our lockdown. God bless you and family. Thank you, Jennifer. Maria Maddow said, God bless and thank you for accepting my call. Thank you, Maria. Adriana. So whenever I talk to people, the Holy Spirit, how powerful he is, people go under an attack the next day. Is this relevant or coincidental? Um, it could be relevant. Adriana, I'm not positive. Thank you so much. Donna Smith, thank you. Said so everything you talk on, I believe, I see spiritually. Thank you, Donna Smith. All right. Yeah, I think it helps people connect with me as well when I'm like honest and transparent of whatever I go through or whatever's going on in my life. I share with, about, with you guys because you know i want you guys to relate to me we're a family we're a community and i think it does help when you're relatable you woke my family up thank you for your ministry thank you josh are pastors gonna be held to a higher accountability yes Te people that teach the word will be held to a higher standard paul said a higher judgment do you think tourette syndrome is demonic i think it can be not every time Isaiah, what's church in Modesto you had an encounter with God? Uh, encounter with God in? The house church. It was called Calvary Temple, but now it's called the house church. That's where I encountered God. Yeah, I'm going to jump off, guys. I'm going to jump off. I am. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You know I'd stay on all night. I got stuff I got to get done a little bit here tonight. And uh, again, I'm not feeling too hot tonight. So... I will see you guys on Monday night. And then also John Ramirez on Tuesday night. I love you guys. Um, I hope some of you didn't get offended on the call of that, of that guy, me going back and forth. Again, I was trying to be patient and kind and humble. And so I hope it didn't stir anybody up or stir anyone to anger or get anyone offended or anything like that. I don't want you guys stirred up to anger and don't, you know, don't email the guy. Don't take it out on him. Don't be mad about it. None of that like that. It's all good. Um, it's all good. Praise the Lord. God is glorified. God moves and it gives people a chance to learn and to, it'll give him a chance to think about what the Bible says and to go back and say, oh, wait, maybe the, I was wrong about this. But yeah, I just want to make sure that I let you guys know that. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to everyone that sewed. Thank you, Maze Lees and everybody else that gave. Really appreciate it for those donations. It keeps us going. All of our content is free. If you guys didn't know, we have over 700 videos on YouTube, all for free. If you can't afford to give, just go watch those videos. There's nothing. There's no problem if you can't give. Tanisha Jackson, thank you for that donation. I appreciate that. But I just want to make sure that we uh, keep putting the word out. And I love you guys. I will see you guys Monday night. God bless. Bye. See ya. Good night. Love you guys. Have a good night. All right, guys, have a good night. Thank you. I will see you guys. New videos on Saturday and Sunday. New videos Saturday and Sunday, 6 o'clock Pacific. Jump on there. Drop a quick comment and a like when the videos go live. It does mean a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. I really do. I really do love you guys and appreciate you guys tremendously. Have a good night, guys. See ya.